In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the war clubs from the Macaw tribe. Made out of whalebone, they are very deadly and unique in design. For thousands of years, the Macaw tribe has occupied the region of the Pacific Northwest known as Cape Flattery, or what is also known as the present town of Mia Bay, Washington, on the Macaw Reservation. But who are the Macaw? Well, we're known for being whale hunters and seal hunters, uh, fishermen, and we were known for being great warriors. We were really good at fighting. We had our own style of martial arts before European contact. They defended their homeland with what appear to be very simple weapons, bow and arrows, clubs, knives. Even the first explorers had trouble colonizing the area. The Spanish had set up a fort here briefly, but were eventually defeated and they left. But what was it about the Macaw that gave them superiority in the battlefield? In the following episodes, we're going to be taking a look at the weapons that were used by the Macaw to see if we can unlock part of this mystery. The Macaw War Club in the Macaw language is called a chitush, which means split your head or split your face. And what's interesting about it is that the name describes not only an action, but its purpose. I interviewed tribal elders to find out more details. It's a, it's a chutup, just like was made in the Ozet, the, our village down there. And it's a war club, and it's made from the jaw bone of the Sequawish gray whale. Oh yeah, the, the jawbone of the whale is the only part you can make the club from because it's just about half inch thick or so. And there's designs on it that are uh, macaw designs and then there's a head here because sometimes there would be heads represented on here because those are things that were taken like um, a war trophy or a um, and they would cut off the head. And so there, some of the war clubs have images like that. And then there's a, uh, like a Thunderbird man, and then also like a Thunderbird mask or something above his head. Um, and that seems also very common to have uh, Thunderbird on the war clubs. The Thunderbird it, it was a being that was really well respected because uh, the Thunderbird also hunted whale. And so it hunted in a different way than we did it. The lightning serpents were like its um, harpoons and it would cast them down and stun a whale and then go down and, and scoop it up in its talons. And then it would bring the whale back to its cave in the Olympic mountains. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's just one of the highest crests, one of the really highest crests here. There was always um, some type of a wrist um, band on here because if you hit someone with this, it's heavy kind of, you wouldn't want your weapon to fall. So if it did jar out of your hand, you still had it on, on your wrist and were able to wield it back up into place as needed. After talking to Macaw tribal elders, I went away with more questions than answers. My biggest question remaining is why is the Thunderbird used on all of the Macaw war clubs? After I got better at making war clubs out of wood, I finally got good enough to start working with whalebone. It took me about a week to make my first club. I was just about ready to carve the Thunderbird on the head and I decided to test it out first, but I ended up with unexpected results. Well, that didn't exactly go as planned. I actually broke this club right in half. So looking back on that event, it was pretty upsetting. It's basically a whole week's worth of work down the drain, but I did learn that, you know, my ancestors faced the possibility of breaking their club during battle. And so that was a fear in their minds. I also learned that, you know, maybe the club wasn't swung so hard or either differently. So I do have a chance to rebuild. I have uh, one piece of whalebone left. 
So now I'm going to show you how I make whalebone work clubs. Um, this is the lower section of a jaw, jawbone of a whale. Probably a gray whale, I'm not sure what kind it is. But I'm hoping that I can get two clubs out of this. And ideally, what you want to start use is the flattest section right here. Um, the curved section um, is kind of hard to make a club with because ideally you want to have a flat surface. I did cut one out of uh, another jawbone just to see if I could do it. And you can see it's got quite a curve to it. Um, so we try to flatten this out as much as possible and take away this. But I'm still going to make it and see how it comes out. But that was just kind of a test. Uh, really what you want to end up with is a nice flat one like this. So I'm getting ready to start um, planning out where I'm going to make my cuts in this. Now that I have the basic shape of the war club carved out, it's time to carve the Thunderbird on the head. I'm very good at making a, a war club that's historically accurate in weight, shape, and size, but my brother's been carving for a long time, so we're going to go on down to his house and uh, let him help us out with this. Okay, so now we're at the home of my brother's house. So what you working on today? I'm just working on a couple of different war clubs. What are these made out of? These ones are made out of yew wood. I'm just trying to, I don't know, just fix them up. I got a few details to do on this one yet. Uh -huh. Just stain them different colors. So but where did these designs come from? These ones I've made up on my own. Uh -huh. These are my own designs, just looking up at different McCall War Clubs, different designs. Uh -huh. and I kind of put them all together and made my own. Like I've oh, seen yeah. these ones. So there is a lot of designs, or a lot of these are you know, somewhat traditional. They're just you know, kind of combined together from different War Clubs. Yeah, I just put like two or three together and made my own. My own design with the Thunderbird and a Thunderbird headdress. Oh yeah. So this is that first club we did a while ago with the abalone inlays. This is the paddle shaped one. You helped me get the Thunderbird on here in abalone. Mm -hmm. And then I'm making a different design now. This one, um, I copied this design from the archives. It's more like, this is the paddle shaped design. This one is yeah. the, like the teardrop design. And um, I was going to see if you can help me out with the Thunderbird on this on the top here yeah i can do that okay hey my name is jl marquette and i'm a macaw artist um working on a few different of these clubs try to start drawing the thunderbird on this design here This is a lot harder than you would. <laughs> it's really hard to carve. It's got to be careful. You don't cut yourself because it's straining too hard. It's really tough. It's really porous. It's like cutting marble, it feels like. But you just got to keep with it and keep your lines. Don't dig too deep. You just got to start off slow and then ease into it. But yeah, it's a little tough. Oh. 
I'm trying to trying to carve them and hold it without a table. It's yeah. kind of like the hardest, like when I'm outside carving. Yeah, I like use my knees a lot to, to carve. Sometimes you can't use a table because this has a curve on it. It doesn't sit flat. Oh yeah. So a lot of them are just holding it different styles. You can put it on your shoulder to get the stuff. <laughs> Gotta hold it over here. Gotta hold it this way. I think this is the hardest part to carve is the top part. Cause you have nothing to get leverage on. Earlier on in my project, I had uploaded a clip of my girlfriend uh, cracking a coconut with a war club. She just very easily went and popped, and popped the coconut in half. And that had caught the attention of a martial arts expert named Jeremy Holmes. He specializes in Wing Chun Kung Fu and Filipino stick fighting. So he drove out many hours from where he lives to come see the weapon up close. And he also taught a class to our community on how to use McCall War Clubs while he was here. And he showed us the basic strikes and blocks. And we also had a discussion on how the Macaw War Club is probably used. What was your first impression of the Macaw War Club when you got it in your hand? You know, was it like, what kind of weapon was it compared to like, say, the Filipino stick fighting or the Wing Chun butterfly knives? Well, I think it feels very, um, like it could be used very precisely and very tight, mm -hmm. uh, but it still has the option to be able to throw through with some big strikes and carry, let that weight carry through. I've been swinging Macaw War Clubs for about seven months now and I recently made a new discovery and that's if you use a lanyard on the weapon to help hold it, you can actually hold it very loosely and it allows you to whip it. And this whipping sound sounds like a bird flying. And what I'm wondering is could this be the Thunderbird connection that I've been looking for? The weapon being swung through the air sounds like a bird flying. And finally, the weapon connecting with the enemy's skull, the thunderbolt, the weapon of the thunderbird.